Good evening. Sorry for the technical difficulties. It's always fun with technology. I'd like to invite all of our, our, our parents and our students and welcome them to our virtual advanced placement information open house today. We are super, super stoked to be able to, to give you a huge amount of information today. I'm Ken Willoss. I'm the principal here at Bev Facey. And I just want to say to everyone, thank you for joining us today. Um, AP is one of the pillars here of our Bev Facey Community High School life. Um, it's one of those pieces that you know and associate with Bev Facey whenever you walk through the door. It's basically an opportunity for students to explore their passions in their areas of academic interest. And it's an ability or a chance for them to actually be in a position to not only go further and answer some of those unanswered questions that they have in their brain about the things that are really, really compelling to them, but also for them to be in a position to gain some experience in terms of rigor and also the hard work that might be required at post-secondary. As well, it also allows them to sometimes, in, in some cases, get some credits as well, which helps things out at uh, post-secondary life as well. Tonight, there's going to be a lot of unanswered questions. Please don't hesitate um, to contact the school. I mean, we're going to try our best to answer those questions as we move through the night and in our chat rooms, but don't hesitate for a second to please give us a call. Let us know uh, what might be on your mind or some things that might be really, really puzzling you about the program. Please be reminded that Bev Facey does have open boundaries at this point in time and that registration is occurring all the way through February. All students throughout EIPS are welcome to come to Bev Facey to join our advanced placement program. And I look forward to, to meeting you all and working with you next year. At this point, I'd like to pass on uh, some more information and also some introduction and also our presentation to be handled by Assistant Principal, Ms. Williamson. Good evening. I'm Trudy Williamson, the Grade 10 Administrator and Advanced Placement Coordinator here at Bev Facey. I'm very excited to welcome you to our Advanced Placement Virtual Open House. The Advanced Placement Program is an integral part of academics at Bev Facey, and we are excited to share this opportunity with you tonight. I will begin by going through a presentation that will provide you with a complete overview of the AP program. Mrs. Kropp, our Grade 11 Assistant Principal, will be our technical producer for tonight and will be answering questions as you put them in the chat. If there are specific questions she feels I should review for the entire group, I will answer them at the end of the presentation. Once the general information session concludes, I encourage you to visit our subject specific breakout sessions. In these sessions, you'll be able to speak directly to our AP teachers and ask them questions related to their subject areas. We'll get started with the presentation now. Often we get the question of what exactly is advanced placement. In short, it's an opportunity for high school students to really challenge themselves through academic rigor, which can translate into academic program financial benefits at the post-secondary level. Can anyone register for the advanced placement program? Yes, however, we recommend that students who are considering our advanced placement program really show mastery in the prerequisite courses. Usually this would be having a mark of at least 80% in the prerequisite course. So for those of you that are coming from junior high, we would like to see you have 80% in the core subject areas that you're looking at continuing in our advanced placement program. In addition to a mark, we're also looking for a mindset of learning and engagement. We want you to be really passionate about the subject areas and willing to work hard to dig deep into the concepts. 
We have a number of AP courses that we offer here at BevFacy. You can see from the list that this includes both option area courses as well as core subjects. Students are often worried that homework will be an issue in the AP classes. They think that there, there must be a lot more content or that things will be a lot more difficult if they take AP. And that is just not true. We're very lucky that the advanced placement curriculum is very similar to our Alberta curriculum in many of our subject areas. So if you're enrolled in an AP course, you are writing the exact same final exam as the students who are in the dash one stream of that course are writing that are not in AP. The difference in the courses is that the material may move at a slightly faster pace. There's a couple of reasons for this, that you're in a course with students who are quite good at that subject area and they're wanting to get more deep into the subject. So it just naturally moves a little faster. And if there are differences from the Alberta curriculum and the AP curriculum, the teachers need to have a couple of extra days where they can cover the AP curriculum so that students are prepared for those AP exams that come at the end of the program. Will I be assessed differently or marked harder in an AP class? When we are submitting marks to Alberta education, we are using Alberta curriculum only when we're assigning marks. So the assessments and the standards for AP are the same as they are in our Dash 1 classes. And when we report a final mark to Alberta Education, it's based only on the portion that is Alberta curriculum. The AP content that may be covered in the course will be used as formative information for students and parents so that they know how prepared they are for those AP concepts that they'll need for the exam but that information is not necessarily reported to Alberta Education unless it matches up with the curriculum. This is a benefit to students because they're, all, they're able to improve their understanding of many of the concepts in a lot of the subject areas, and it is also possible that it will help them improve their mark. So if a teacher is giving a student an advanced placement assessment, and this assessment shows improved learning based on the Alberta curriculum, the teachers may choose to include this positive improvement to the student grade at the end of the semester when they're calculating the final grades. Students do not have to take all AP classes. It's very common that students are skilled in a certain area or interested in a certain area and maybe not in some of the other areas. AP is personalized and flexible, so students may take one, several, or all of the AP courses that we offer if it fits into your schedule. You can see an example there on the screen shows that students are involved in some AP classes and some of the, some of the other ones are our regular mainstream courses. AP does not dominate your life. Our AP students are active participants in our FACI athletics, as well as fine arts and other things that students have going on in their lives. We promote students that have a balanced life and AP is a big part of that, but it does allow students to continue on with their extracurricular activities and it is not dominating their entire school experience. Students who are part of the AP program actually receive two transcripts. So when you finish right through to grade 12, you have your Alberta education transcript that you use to apply to post-secondary. And after you've written your AP exams, you get a second transcript from the College Board. Post-secondary institutions look at both of those transcripts and they always look for the higher grade. So there is no disadvantage to taking those AP exams because the post-secondary institutions will take whichever mark is higher. As I said at the beginning, AP is a really big part of our, our culture here at Bev Facey, and we celebrate our AP students who write their AP exams at grad. Students receive honor cords 
Um, a single honor cord would be for a student completing one to three AP exams in their high school time. And if they write more than four AP exams, then they wear the double honor cord. The other picture that's there is uh, what the valedictorian would wear, the special sash, as well as the honor cords if they're part of our advanced placement program. How many people take AP? We are finding that every year our AP numbers are increasing as students become more aware of the benefits of taking this program. Currently about 20% of FACI's student body is in advanced placement and that varies depending on the course. The AP exams. We strongly encourage all students registered in AP courses to write the exams. That is the whole purpose of the program is to go through the experience and finish off by preparing for the exams. There are many good reasons for doing this. Some students say, well, they don't they don't necessarily want to write the exam because they don't feel they need it. They're happy with their Alberta education mark. The exam is more like a college level experience, so we recommend that students complete the exams because it is a, a no risk way of them getting that experience so that when they start their post secondary lives, they are well prepared and they're comfortable in the environment and they're more likely to do better in their first year when they have to write those post secondary exams. The exams happen in May usually about the 9th or 10th of, of May, and most of the exams are written at the 30 level. There are a few different ones, and I have a chart coming up that will show when students are likely to write the exams. The exams, unfortunately, are not free. This is not a BevFacy cost. This is a College Board cost, and so they're costing $140 for a regular AP exam. We know that not everyone is able to afford this amount, so the College Board offers a fee reduction for qualifying students so that exams cost $95 instead of $140. This chart gives you an idea of what courses students would take at each grade. In grade 10, for example, we do have AP courses at all of our subject, our core subject areas, except for social studies. And the reason for that is because the curriculum just doesn't align with the uh, social studies and the AP curriculum in that area. So in grade 10, students could take AP courses for all of the core subjects, except for social studies. These are considered AP prep courses. They, there is not a lot of AP content covered. It's just to get students used to the pace and the rigor that they might experience in grade 11 and 12. One exception to that, many students who are really into the sciences choose to take Biology 20 AP in their grade 10 year. The reason they do this is because if they're going to be taking all three sciences, they might find that the scheduling of all of those core subjects might become difficult if they wait until grade 12 to take them all. The option courses like computing science may be taken at any of the grades. It's not restricted to grade 10, 11 or 12. English language arts is it's kind of a, one of the more unique areas in our core subjects. There are actually two separate exams that are related to English language arts. For English language arts 20-1, the exam happens in the grade 11 year and it is called English language and composition. For English 30-1, there's a separate exam for that, English literature and composition. Students may choose to write one or both of the exams. It's not required that they have taken the English language and composition in order to write the English literature and composition. One other point that I want to make about the English language arts in particular as an AP area. I would strongly recommend that students who are considering taking English language arts 10-1 AP 
not only be students who received 80% or better in their English Language Arts 9, but sh they should be students who really enjoy the English Language Arts, that they're passionate about reading and they really want to dig into some of the classics like To Kill a Mockingbird. While I said previously that there was alignment between the Alberta curriculum and the AP curriculum. That is certainly true in English Language Arts 10-1, but the literature selections that are chosen are different between the courses because in English Language Arts 10-1, students are reading literature that will help them prepare for their exams that they may choose to write in grade 11 or 12. Social studies, again, does not have an AP course associated to it. So if you're wanting to do a full AP program, you would just register for social studies 10-1. Mathematics has two separate areas that students can choose from. We have calculus, which for that stream, students would do math 10 C AP, then they would move into math 20-1 and 30-1 AP, and then they would finish off with math 31 AP, and then write the calculus exam. We have a second course, statistics AP, which could be written in either grade 11 or 12. We find that calculus is very important for students entering any of the STEM related fields or business. If you're going to be going into a post-secondary program that will require you to take calculus in post-secondary, it is a very good idea to have some experience with calculus in high school. Statistics is also a very important course for students entering many different post-secondary programs. Even if you're going into the Faculty of Arts, it is very possible that you will encounter a statistics course. So taking statistics in high school, again, is a great way to prepare yourself for post-secondary. In science, there are four separate exams for students. Biology, AP, which most students tend to take in grade 11 for their exam because they've done Bio 20 in grade 10. Uh, it is also possible that you take it in grade 12, though. Chemistry 30 and Physics 30. There are actually two physics exams. So that's where I get four from my, my total at the beginning. Chemistry and Physics 30 are interesting because they are taught as year-long courses on opposite days. So if you're looking at taking those courses, it's best that you take them in the same year because then they go opposite each other and you don't end up with a strange spare in your schedule. It is possible to do them separately. It's just they take up a whole block all year long for each one. The College Board is a really great resource for students, in, as well as having your teachers who will provide you with all the information you need. You have access to AP Classroom through the College Board, where there are all kinds of practice questions and lots of online topics and videos for you to help to prepare for your AP exams. What are the post-secondary benefits of taking advanced placement? Colleges and universities recognize your scores on your advanced placement exams as potential replacements over your final grades from the, the Alberta curriculum. Here's an example of what the university would translate. So if someone received a score of five on the AP exam, the U of A would consider that a mark of 96%. A four would be an 86% and so on down. So if we're talking about a course like Math 30-1, if you got a five on the AP exam, you would submit a 96% for your admissions average, as well as whatever you got for your Alberta curriculum. So the university would see both of those marks on there and they would take whichever one is higher. McEwen is also another, they do the same kinds of things. And Kings and Nate, you have to contact the the individual post-secondaries to get an idea of exactly what they use because they're all a little bit different. There's another benefit of taking the AP exams and that's transfer credit. If you get a score of a four or five on an AP exam, the post-secondaries can assign you a completion for an introductory course. 
Again, this is really specific to the institution. Uh, you can see here the U of A. If we're looking at biology, if you got an, a four or a five, then they would say you have completed biology at the 100 level. So that's a course you don't have to take when you get to post-secondary. McEwen is exactly the same kind of idea. Many of the institutions are also considering a more holistic application process. So they're looking at our students challenging themselves by taking a rigorous program such as AP instead of you know, the regular dash one path. And the style of exam that you write in AP is unique and a great learning opportunity for students to prepare themselves for the post-secondary experience. We are extremely excited to be reintroducing the AP capstone program for next year. The capstone program consists of three courses. In grade 10, you would take the capstone prep course, then you would do AP seminar in grade 11 and AP research in grade 12. So for incoming grade nine students, we would want you to choose the capstone prep. For those of you that are in grade 10 at Bev Facey or somewhere else and are looking to come to Bev Facey for grade 11, you could take the capstone prep or you could go straight into the AP seminar class. The capstone program is a research-based program where students look into areas that they are passionate about and that they want to do research in and they make collaborative projects and eventually in the AP research course finish with a research paper. The U of A recognizes this capstone diploma by awarding three 100 level credits to students. It is students who complete this program are highly regarded by post-secondary institutions because they are extremely well prepared by the skills that they've gained through this program. Vertical teams, as I've said, the courses go from 10 to 20 to 30. The teachers all work together and they weave all of the advanced placement concepts into the various courses so that there is not a lot that students would need to look at on their own. It's covered by the teachers, whether that be through seminars that happen or during our Alberta curriculum. Our teachers are very qualified to be teaching the advanced placement courses. They attend professional conferences and professional development sessions currently online, um, but there are also conferences that they have attended in the past in person. There are in this presentation student videos, which I'm not going to show because it doesn't translate well through the uh, virtual presentation, but I will be posting a copy of this presentation on our website. So please feel free to take a look at those student experience videos on your own at home. We covered the costs already. I guess one thing I didn't mention was that there, you know, there is a cancellation fee. We do want students to commit to writing the exams and the college board gives us a deadline for registering our students and they charge us a cancellation fee if we cancel. As Mr. Willaw said at the beginning, Elk Island Public Schools re registration is in February only. FACI will accept all students who want to come here to take advantage of our fantastic advanced placement program, but it is very important that you don't miss deadlines. So if you are interested, make sure that you complete your returning student registration during February. Uh, we are an open boundary school and we will accept all students who apply. We have our teachers on standby now with the breakout sessions. There's a couple of different ways for you to get to these sessions. Um, we have on our website, on the home page, where it says Advanced Placement Open House. If you go in there, it tells you the name of each of the sessions. And if you click on that, it will link directly to where the teachers are waiting to answer your questions. Um, Mrs. Crop, are there any questions that have been asked that I haven't answered? She says no, we have uh, managed to cover them all through the presentation. Um, if you have any questions after this presentation, you can contact me by email. I would be happy to answer any questions by email or feel free to give me a call here at the school. 
I will be in charge of the capstone breakout session. So if you want to pop into that one, you will find me there and you can uh, you can ask me questions about AP capstone or about any other AP items that you might have. Thank you again for taking the time to join us. Please go talk to our teachers. They are the experts and they will be happy to answer your questions.